Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spruverse, my scale model universe. I hope everybody is doing well. So today we mark part one of the Build the Interstellar Ranger. Uh, this is a kit that has been out for several years. Uh, I built a few of them, uh, but it sort of dawned on me that every time I've built this, I've given it away, and I don't have one for myself. So it was time to do that and put one in my collection. Now I've decided I'm not going to go completely crazy on this build. We're not going to light it. We're not going to have an interior. But I am going to do a couple of things to improve on it just a little bit. And they are tips that I've picked up over the years of watching some really talented people build this kit. And uh, they've done a fantastic job. So I'm sort of, um, you know, going to follow in their footsteps, as it were. So here it is. It's the Interstellar Ranger from uh, Mobius Models. And uh, it's in 172 scale. It is a plastic kit. They say skill level is three, ages 15 and up. I'll be the judge of that. Um, now, in the past, I know there has been a lot of complaints. Well, not complaints. I don't think that's fair. But uh, a, a lot of chatter, uh, I would say, about how few parts there actually are with this kit. But I don't think that's the strength of this kit. I think the strength of this kit is it's a beautiful design. It's very well made. And at the end of the day, what you end up with is a very, very good interpretation of the original filming miniature. Now, there's lots of resources online that you can check out, film clips and all kinds of things. And very, uh, very many people have decided which sort of state they want their ship in, right? Some want it pristine, some want it heavily weathered, some have put them in dioramas on the ocean planet, which I think is incredibly cool. I'm going to weather this ship as if it's uh, been out there being knocked around because I just love to weather and age things and I think that'll be a lot of fun, so we're going to do that. I haven't decided quite on the base yet, but I do think it's going to be some kind of a planet surface, uh, and that should be a lot of fun. The other thing I'm going to do is I am going to use the Power Graphics Photo Etch Kit, and I'm also going to use the masking kit that is available, still available from Aztec Dummy, Lou Del Maso's Aztec Dummy, and uh, that is AD42 is the... Um, is the kit from Aztec Dummy. And uh, the Paragraphics set is still available, and that is here. That is the Ranger Photo Etch Detail set from Paragraphics. It's PGX194, and I'm going and I'm going to be using this as well. Now, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, because I, I, I you know I I'm not, um, I'm not a master modeler, I don't claim to be. Uh, in fact, I am a member of the Mediocre Modelers Club on Facebook, and I think that's about where I stand. But what I do have an opportunity to do is test out and try all kinds of different things. And that's a big part of this, uh, the fun of this channel, I hope, is that you'll get to see me use three or four different versions of the same thing. And so you can see what they're like in action and, and how I do with them. And then you have an opportunity to make some choices for yourself as to just exactly what items you want to choose or, or, or not use. And uh, my website, which is up and running now, which is spruverse.com, please check it out, is where I will blog and I will leave descriptions and details of everything that I'm doing. So you don't have to worry about any of the descriptions in the YouTube video. Just go to my website, spruverse.com, and everything will be there for you. That way I don't have to worry about what I'm putting in the descriptions every week. And of course, you can always feel free to leave something in the comments, and I'm always, uh, or send me an email at spruverse.com. Um, and I'm always happy to, to answer your, your, your questions. It's always great to hear from you. So here we go. Now, um, what I've done is in step one, I've taken out several of the pieces because one of the things you do first of all, well, I'm doing first of all, is preparing the the actual top of this kit. Now, what you'll see I've done 
is I've actually cut out the entire window section of this kit. Uh, the entire thing. And, and the reason why I have done that, and I've chose to do that, is because I have found that when you go to insert the paragraphics um, photo edge, it is a lot cleaner to be able to drop it into a perfectly cut out window than it is to chew away at the windows and have them sort of disappear behind it. I've tried that method and I think it's very clunky and from different angles you can actually see some of the chew. And so by the time you just keep cutting it away and cutting it away, there's no real surface structure to it anyway and it just is really annoying. The other thing it does is it makes it harder for you to put in your windows. Now Paragraphics does supply you with enough material, now this is uh, not diffused, it just has a protective, uh, just has a protective cover on it, but they do supply you with enough uh, material for you to actually put your windows in. And um, uh, what I found is, now there's several versions of this, you can smoke this, you can spray the Tamiya smoke on it, which I found can streak, guys, and you've got to be really careful because when you go to actually mask this thing up to give it its final uh, sort of dull coat or you know semi-gloss or whatever you, however you're choosing to, to finish it, it should be a dull coat because it needs to look like um, it's it's in outer space and not like a toy. But when you go to do that, if you get any of that on on the on the windows that you've sprayed with smoke. You're going to streak them and you won't be able to clean them and you're going to be in a world of hurt. I do not have it with me today, but what I intend to do is I intend to go to my local car auto shop um, because I need to, to look at it. And I'm going to get myself a small roll of, um, uh, of um, blackout material for a car. And it comes in various different sizes and it's sticky and uh, I intend to actually lay that on the surface of this um, and uh, I'm going to use that. It'll create a nice kind of glass shimmer to it and um, it will essentially, and if I get a really, uh, a really opaque one, which I intend to do, uh, you won't really be able to see inside the kit and that'll be a good thing. Um, because as we all know, uh, the, 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 the scale of this thing and the design of this is, 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 is such that in reality there's actually no bloody room inside there for a cockpit or for anyone to live, but hey, we don't care. Uh, we just love what we, we just love it, right? So anyway, that's a little bit about that. Now, the way I did this is, um, what I did was I took a very, very sharp blade, and now that's, this is one of my things. Uh, with with model making and I know it's going to drive some of you crazy but I cannot have enough exacto blades on um, on hand I'm constantly replacing them now it can get a little expensive but it's well worth it it's just like cooking the sharper your blade uh, the safer it is and the more it's going to do for you so I always keep a fresh clean blade in my exacto knife but I also use a scalpel, um, a medical scalpel with uh, scalpel blades as well. Not good for cutting because the actual blade itself is quite flimsy. But what it is great for is for some delicate trimming and cutting and scraping. And so I always like to have one of these on hand. And of course my handy dandy chisels. I have one with uh, exacto chisels. I keep one on my bench of both sizes. Uh, this happens to be 18, and I also have uh, hiding here somewhere. Here it is, um, uh, 17. Now it's hiding on the bench somewhere, but uh, I keep 17 and 18 on the bench at all times. Here it is. <laughs> it's like deaf, dumb, and stupid. What a way to go through life. But I keep 17 and 18 on the bench. Now. Uh, a couple of reasons for that is, is one, they're really good for delicate uh, removal of, of some glues and things like that. And uh, when you're bondoing, when, uh, before the bondo gets hard, and this is really about resin kits, but when the bond, before the bondo gets hard, it's nice and soft, you can carve it and it, uh, it saves you a lot of aggravation uh, and, and it prevents you from having to do things like wash something down with acetone, which I know a lot of guys like to do, but I promise you, 
you're not, you know, if you've got any any kind of, um, it depends on the plastic too. You really don't want to be washing acetone over your plastic models. Um, so I would do a lot of carving and uh, less, less sanding and it, it works really well. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. I move on. So what I did was, was I took my X-Acto knife and I very carefully on these, uh, on, the, on, the, on the panel lines, and this kit has great panel lines. They're, they're terrific. Um, so uh, I gently started to mark my panel lines and I kept going over the score, over the score, over the score, over the score until I was quite deep into the, into the plastic. And the way you know that is, is when you turn it over, you'll start to see light coming through and you'll see the line itself. And that's when you know you're pretty close. At that point, you can take uh, a small drill. Um, I use this little handy dandy Genesis um, over here. Uh, these are, I think, still available. Um, I used to love my uh, Dremel version of this, but I haven't been able to find it for years. I've got smaller hand tools and things, but I just love this because it fits in your hand and it's really easy to use and it's got um, a variable speed motor so it's very handy and what I did was I take I take it and I don't go all the way to the edge I go very close to the edge and I cut out my piece and um, once you've cut cut that out and uh, here it is once you've cut that out um, you can then just uh, chip away at the rest of it until you get very close and then when you get very close what I do is is I take my uh, my Xeron cutter um, I don't love these for nipping uh, on trees on, on plastic sprues but I do like it for, for things like this and I just nip little sections all the way around and then what I was able to do is just carefully wiggle at it and it snaps right off and you get a perfectly clean line and then you could you know a little bit of cleanup just gently and then um, sanding with one of my handy dandy sand sanding sticks now if you've never heard of uh, Flory Flory sticks go to flory.com pick up their sticks they're fantastic they have them in hard and soft and all different grits and they're, they're just fantastic I, I'm, a, I'm a believer in them and they last forever and so I went ahead and I cleaned, cleaned this out and that got us to here. And then what I did is I was able to take my photo etch parts, which I have annealed. Now, uh, if you don't know anything about annealing, uh, I believe the Paragraphics website has uh, a tutorial on it. I know a couple of people do. Essentially what I do is, is I take it into the kitchen and I get myself some needle nose plies. I'm very careful. I turn the gas on and I lay these on, on, the, uh, on the top of the, on the cooking surface and uh, I let them get uh, very hot. And what you'll see is you'll see a chemical change in the metal and it'll, it'll start changing colors. And as it starts to change colors, you'll know that um, it is starting to anneal. And that's what that allows you to do is then mold this material when it cools uh, to uh, any surface and it won't spring back on you because fresh photo etch on its trees like this tends to be very springy and it won't allow you to use it. And um, then you're going to have a really difficult time trying to get it to do what you want it to do. Sometimes we need to wrap it around a, a little cylinder to make circles. Sometimes we need to bend it with a tool. But in this particular case, it's three pieces that have to be put to, glued together. Now, there are some guys who do not remove this centerpiece. They don't do it. What they do is, is they just sand away all of the, um, the ridges which is a classic way of adding uh, photo etch to anything. You sand away all of the edges and sometimes you chew away at, at, at the center of something so you have a hole. And then of course when you lay your photo etch over that, 
uh, surface it, it lays flat and you can glue it to that surface and um, of course where the holes are uh, they disappear under the clean lines of the photo etch but I have found that for this particular model uh, and I've, I've done it both ways that when you leave this in place and you chew away at it it just adds more grief to your life so if you're careful and you feel comfortable doing it and now if you're a first-time modeler I would probably say don't uh, just sand it down and follow the instructions and you'll be fine you'll get a great model but um, it just won't give you the kind of fit that this will and what I did was was I laid the etch over this shape so I know I had it exactly and because it's been annealed obviously uh, it conforms quite nicely then what I did was I taped it down and I carefully tacked it with some medium viscosity um, super glue just careful tacks almost like you're welding something and uh, I instantly cured it with some zip kicker and that allowed me to then turn it over and glue, uh, put a bead of glue along the back here. Now this doesn't have to be pretty because you're never going to see it. Um, I may just uh, grind this down just, uh, just a hair just to make sure uh, that my windows lay flat. But I've got to be very careful because you take away too much of the glue. This is going to all fall apart. But it is quite sturdy. Now what I use is, I use the Loctite gel the super glue gel not their 60 second not their 60 second both are great um, here's their 60 second be careful they're very different this will take a lot longer to dry than this will uh, the 60 second is great when you have very delicate photo etch just a little touch of the 60 second gel allows you to move it around and it allows you to clean it up with a little bit of acetone as it's drying and it works beautifully on photo edge it's so much better than anything else I've ever used once you get used to this guys I don't think you'll go back but that's for delicate parts for something like this the the gel itself which um, is, is, a, is a super glue cyanic cry cryanolate as they say um, don't use zip kicker with this it, 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 it won't work but um, Put it on like a bead and leave it overnight and that's what I did and you get a really nice uh, conform. The other thing you get is you get if there's any slight gappage and I have just a little bit of gappage on this um, you will get um, you, you will get some nice gap filling and so um, that's what we did there and then what I will do obviously is is I will light block this with my trusty uh, slick tulip uh, in the black um, you, you can get this at Hobby Lobby uh, you can get it online uh, it is a great light blocker and um, it has a really nice thin nozzle it's really easy to use it's a fabric paint really but it light blocks fantastically and so what I will do is I will come along and just put a little bit of the tulip in in here uh, just because when I go to prime this I want to make sure that I don't have uh, any any possibility for there to be a, 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 light, a light leak at all now um, I would also say before I carry on that you have to be very very patient and delicate with these procedures um, in the past I have been um, you know frustrated or, or can't quite get something in into place and when that happens you j just walk away because you're you're not going to um, uh, you're not going to uh, do yourself any favors by by attacking this stuff it's very flimsy and even now as I'm looking at it uh, I've been handling this too many times probably and I see just a few little places where where it, it, it starts to give so be very de very delicate with it anyway so here we are at this point and what we're going to do now is is we're going to carefully insert this into the hole and we're going to tack it down from the back and then glue it in and you get this perfect, perfect 
uh, I mean, the, the Paragraphics pieces could not be better, and the fit is just fantastic, and it fits lovely and flush to the surface. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to tack it, and, uh, and then I'm going to glue it into place, and then we're going to leave that to dry. Then once that is done, um, this will be ready for um, a coat of primer. And that will allow us to, to sort of solidify everything and see if we have a, a, any issues. Um, and then we can uh, continue on with the bill. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to uh, carefully tack this in place and then glue it and let this dry. Uh, you don't need to see glue being tacked down or, or drying. Uh, so um, we will move on to the next, for you, we'll be moving on to the next stage. For me, I've got a couple of hours of work and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so what I've done is, as promised, I've, I've glued this into place and um, it is beautifully flush with the, uh, with the surface. Uh, let me get Phil Cam out here for the first time for this show and uh, get you up close and personal to this so that you can see what I've done. Uh, now, uh, it is perfectly flush to the surface and you're not going to get that if you try to lay this uh, um, photo etch over the, uh, the existing part, you just won't. You're going you're gonna to end up having to do a little more puttying than you want to. Um, and you can see from the back, all I've done is I've used uh, super glue to put this into place. Now, there are some guys who like to use JB Weld uh, for metal. Uh, it's a great light blocker and uh, it works quite well. I use it and have used it. However, I think it's overkill here, to be honest with you, and that's just my personal opinion. I don't think you need to do it. Um, and as long as you're careful, now you have to be super careful from now on because this is relatively fragile, but it is, it's quite good. What I'm going to do now is just clean this up uh, just with a little acetone in places where I feel, on my finger, I can feel like I've got a little bit of, of, of glue on, on, on the surface that came off on my hands. The back of this um, is not perfectly cut. But fear not, because this cowling, I'm calling it a cowling, I don't really know what it is, but it's, um, I think it is uh, solar panels. Um, that will drop in here. Uh, like this and form the back of the ship and you can see it, it lays over that quite nicely and so um, this is perfectly flush so that is ready to go um, and that's it for this for, for step one uh, because that's going to take you quite a few hours to get to this point in the next episode uh, we will um, have primed this and we'll start to talk about um, how, you, uh, how you sort of finish this in terms of uh, prepping it for final paint. Uh, hopefully we're not going to need to do too much puttying and seam cleaning. Um, I don't think we will. Uh, the actual lines that are formed on this, uh, a lot of them will just sort of disappear. Uh, under the uh, under the painting scheme, and and I'll go through that 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 with you. Uh, we might even tackle a little bit of dry brushing as well. But that's it for this episode. This is part one, step one of build the interstellar ranger from Mobius. I hope this was helpful and enjoyable, and um, I'll see you on the next episode. As always, be safe, be well, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.